Hi, we're here today to talk about the Portalupi Bianco 2009 vintage. This is our own proprietary blend. We feel it really exemplifies the light, crisp white style of Italian wines you experience in Italy. It's comprised predominantly of Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, specifically 48% Sauvignon Blanc, 47% Chardonnay, and 5% Muscat Canelli, which gives it its elegant floral gardenia jasmine, little touch of grapefruit nose to it. It's just fermented in stainless steel, only goes through primary fermentation. There's no malolactic fermentation or barrel aging. The whole intent is to retain that crisp freshness and floralness of the wine. It's a super summer wine in that it's got great acidity and works well with summer kinds of foods, salads, seafood dishes, so on and so forth. Uh, we're very proud of this wine. We get a lot of uh, great comments about it. It's not your typical California overbearing Chardonnay or overly grassy or herbaceous Sauvignon Blanc. It's a signature into itself and we hope that you can have an opportunity to experience this wine in the not too distant future. Thank you. Hello everyone, we're here to talk about Pinot Noir today. Um, I have a passion for Pinot Noir. Uh, I can tell you Pinot Noir is probably the most challenging varietal for a winemaker to make, but it's the most rewarding when it comes out right. So we're going to talk today about our 2008 Paso Robles Russell Family Ranch Pinot Noir. Now I would like to point out we also do make a Russian River Valley Pinot Noir and I would love to be experiencing that with you today but unfortunately we're sold out in between vintages. When the next vintage is released we'll give you an update on that wine as well but today we're going to talk about the Paso and this is a beautiful Pinot Noir in the old world sense. It's atypical of most domestic Pinot Noirs in that it is grown on a high ridge close to the Pacific Ocean so it gets warm days but evening breezes coming off the Pacific that allow the vineyard to mature the grapes slowly, evenly over a long period of time. That coupled with the fact that this, is, this particular grower is nationally renowned, it's all Dijon clones and some of the top producers not just from our region from, but even from down in that area seek out his grapes and we feel very fortunate to get it and the result is a spectacular burgundy. Uh, simply said, this wine is deep black brooding fruit uh, with, with hints of like slate, limestone, mineral. In the true, I would like to say, Grand Chevaux, Gervache on the 10 style of burgundy, opposed to the more Volnay style of a lot of producers. It's a little more feminine and lighter, which I, appreciate and make that style as well but we like to make a bigger style that actually this Pinot Noir can benefit from a number of years of bottle aging but it's a great super experience right now in its youth as well so this is fermented at cool temperatures I'm not a big believer in a lot of cold soaking or extended maceration I like to ferment it through evenly put it in really nice Francois Ferrer barrels, French barrels, and just let it age. Maybe one racking during the lifetime of the wine, bottled unfined and unfiltered, so it retains all of the nuances and esters of the great Pinot Noir grape, which includes some really fun components above and beyond the fruit and, and soil of, of little mushroom and what I like to refer to as, and some people go, really? Boston Harbor at low tide, a little funkiness in, in Great Burgundy is what the romance is all about and this wine provides it. So we hope you have an opportunity to experience this wine. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Hi everyone. We're here to talk about our Barbera. This is at the 2008 Nevada County. One of the few wines we make outside of our home appellation of Sonoma County and for a very good reason. Portalupi, which is my wife's family name, hails from Piedmonte, more specifically the hills of Asti, a little village called Montilio, which is the center of the Barbera world. And we try to be true to the family spirit and heritage by making what we feel is a very authentic old world style Barbera, to the point that our research took us there and 
ultimately resulted, resulted in us bringing cuttings over from the mother clone, the Prunato clone from Piedmonte, and planting a small three and a half acre vineyard that provides us with this world-class Barbera. I say that in every sense because the vineyard is relatively young, only about nine years old. This 2008 is only the fourth vintage off the vineyard. Production is very small, as you can imagine. But the second vintage, 2006, was named Best Barbera in the World, was best of class double gold at the San Francisco International Wine Competition. So it sort of put us on the map as the cult leader of domestic Barbera, well, internationally for that matter. But, you know, I want to speak to the vinification process and all the time and care that goes into it. Not only have we went to great pains to provide great fruit from the vineyard, we even mimic what the small Barbera producers in Piedmonte do. Unlike most of the wine world, Italy included, France, the U.S., everybody uses primarily French oak barrels and or American oak barrels, but for some reason in that far northern region of Italy, where they make Barbera, they use red Slovakian oak. So we also implore that in our barrel aging thing, and it has borne out a true, true Diasti Dialba style Barbera. This is a wine that just broods of classic old world cuisine from, from the foot of the Italian Alps in Piedmonte. You know, dark vegetables, eggplant parmigiano, wild boar carpaccio, gamey food. Inherently, Barbera has great acidity, so you can let it get real ripe and let it show its sort of dis distinctive black mission fig, dark plum, a little mushroom aroma, and it's just a wonderful medium bodied, great acidity food wine. We are very proud of this wine and the heritage from which it comes. We hope you have an opportunity to experience it. Hi everyone, we're here to talk about Zinfandel today. We make three Zinfandels and we make three Zinfandels for a very good reason. I'm passionate about Zinfandel, as I am about all my wines, but more so Zin in that we are in Sonoma County, which is like the center of the Zinfandel universe. And we try to make three Zinfandels from all three of the major Appalachian valleys here in the county. So I'm gonna speak to you about each and the differentiation and why they are different. We're going to start with the 2008 Dry Creek Valley Zinfandel, which is our newest release right here. And uh, this is just a classic Dry Creek Valley Zin. And really from the standpoint of Zinfandel, Dry Creek Valley is regarded as the center of the Zinfandel world. So we make our Dry Creek Valley Zinfandel in a way that really we think focuses on what Dry Creek is all about. Very claret, bright, exploding red fruit, raspberry, and a little fine hints of, oh, a little cinnamon, but white pepper too. Moderate to medium, or light to medium tannins. And the wine, you know, is not overly dark, but is definitely like medium garnet colored. Excellent food wine. This vineyard is a very small vineyard, just two thirds away up Dry Creek Valley. This propagated off the Raffinelli clone, which is regarded as one of the top Zinfandel clones in the world, definitely in Dry Creek Valley. And we think we capture the essence of that clone, both from the standpoint of the fruit and the soil, which is red volcanic, which for some reason just seems to work well with the climate and the grape to produce world-class wine. And this is an excellent wine production, just around 500 cases, which for us is one of our biggest production wines, but in the world of wine, it's still a very sought after small commodity. So we, we hope you have an opportunity to enjoy this wine in the future. We're going to move on next to one of my favorite wines. This is our Old Vine Russian River Valley. And growing up around Zinfandel, Old Vine was always a sought after commodity. And believe me, it's being more and more of a commodity as time goes on. And we feel very fortunate to get fruit off this vineyard. This vineyard is located right in the heart of Russian River Valley was planted in 1910, so it's turning 100 years old this year, which is very rare for any wine grape, let alone Zinfandel. This is classic Russian River Zin. Uh, cool, cooler zone, longer hang time, more intensity, both in color and, and, and fruit concentration. It screams in the nose of 
like raspberry framboise liqueur almost, but a touch of cotton candy, bubble gum, very playful on the nose, but once you put it on the palate, you realize this is a serious wine experience. This is one of a kind, not for the faint of heart, as I say, as you can see by the color, which by the way, we don't charge extra for, is uh, just a super, super wine that can be laid down and cellared for uh, many years and will give you a very satiny, silky experience as time goes on. But right now, if you are to experience this wine and put it in a food situation, as we all know in the wine business, it's all about sight, swirling, smelling, sipping, savoring. Well, with a wine like this, there's another S. And my friends, it's screaming for baby back ribs. So this is, this is a real jewel, and we hope you have an opportunity to experience it. And then finally is our Sonoma Valleys Inn, which comes from the third major valley here in Sonoma County, down in the southeastern corner of the county, where it's a little more of a banana belt. The soils are a little loamier, more nutrient rich. So the fruit tends to ripen faster and is more fruit driven, not as minerally and spicy as some of the other appellations like Dry Creek and Russian River. However, it does have its own distinction. The Zinfandel aromas tend to convert into more blackberry jam. Here again, very intense color, very deep, a little residual sugar left in this wine purposely during fermentation to accentuate the blackberry component. This wine is a perfect companion, not only here again with gamier meats and barbecue and things of that nature, but can even bode well with dessert insofar it has a little residual sugar for you. So, you know, here again, I hope you get an idea of what the world of Zinfandel is like in a nutshell and hope you have an, experience, have an opportunity to experience all these wines. Thank you. Hi everyone. We're here to talk about uh, another one of our latest new wines very limited production. This is the Anton M. And Anton M was my grandfather, Anton Machado Borges, born in Portugal. Henceforth, this is a tribute to him. It's our port. It's a beautiful old world crafted style port. We only do two barrels a year. So it's very limited production, aged for four years in barrel. It's comprised of three grape varieties. The predominant grape in the blend is Tariga Nacional, which is the main red grape of Oporto. So that makes it very authentic. That along with the fact that it is stunted or fortified with great brandy, opposed to a lot of pork producers who use neutral spirits or basically white lightning, it has a great caramelization that accentuates the dark, deep fruit. Although, been, although it's been aged in barrel for four years, I can guarantee you that you can lay a bottle of this down for decades and it would just develop and become very silky and tawny over time. Right now, it's just so beautiful. It just pushes out all the fruit, spice, caramel, little roasted coffee, but underlying heavy, heavy, dark, dark black fruit. Fortified, like I said, with great brandy. Not typically as sweet as most ports, and I purposely did that to give it better accessibility instead of being like eight or nine percent residual sugar it's a little over six it's not as high as alcohol as most ports which tend to be 20 or 21 percent and tend to have a real burning characteristic to them this is like 19 and a half percent just superly balanced very old world very limited very luscious and i'm saying yes dessert but also a good cuban cigar thank you